and consider to do what in the world's the matter with you. Oh, I... I didn't mean to be crying, so I, I'm sorry. Who are you? I could give you three guesses and give you another, but you never would guess. I'm your fairy godmother. Oh, you couldn't have fooled me. I guessed you were that from the shape of your comical, conical hat. You don't think I look like a witch? Oh, not at all. The witches and I are always getting each other's mail, you know. Oh, how sad. The postman who brings us our mail never bothers to tell which is witches from fairy godmothers. Oh, but enough of this chit-chat and sociable Jimmy. Tell me, why do you cry when you ought to be grinning? Well, fairy godmother, I wanted so much to go to the prince's ball at the royal palace. But my stepmother says I'm nothing but a scullery maid to be kept in the kitchen. Duck, duck, this disc and a double poo-poo. I know positively a plan that will do. Now stand very tall on the tip of your toes. We'll see what my magic can do for your clothes. I'll flourish my wand with a fiddle dig the abracadabra and the ETC. Oh! I feel critical, physical. What have you done? Look in the looking glass. That will be fun. Really, me? It is you, little sister girl, dressed for the ball. <laughs> Gisella and, and Bella won't know me at all. <laughs> uh, but how shall I get to the royal palace, good fairy godmother? Oh, oh, I forgot all about that. Do you have a pumpkin handy? Well, he here's a plump pumpkin I've saved for a pie. I'll make it into a coach in a blink of an eye. <laughs> I'd never believe it. All golden inside. You don't have to believe it. Just climb in and ride. Uh, but uh, who will draw the carriage? My wand will invite a few magical forces to alter these mice into six prancing horses. <laughs> Let me see. I should give you a coachman or two with livery and wings. Oh, these lizards will do. With a driver that's fat and a fishman that's lean, you'll arrive in a style that's befitting a queen. Uh, one thing, fairy godmother. Is it discreet to dance at a ball with no shoes on my feet? What? Oh, did I forget the shoes? Oh, dear, 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 how careless of me. I'll give you some footwear that none can surpass. Two exquisite slippers of crystalline glass. I can scarcely believe what I see with my eyes. Pray, how did you get them exactly my size? Made all my wishes completely come true. Wishing has made it so by merely Godmother, the magic will last until midnight, and then your gown will be tattered and tattered again. <gasps> your horses and coachmen and carriage, my dear, at the twelfth stroke of midnight, will all disappear. I promise you, Fairy Godmother, I'll leave the palace before midnight. And thank you for all of your kindness. Thank you from the very bottom of my heart. While the rain pours down outside the window of her little walk-up flat, 
Lucinda Brown is curled up on her bed wearing one old shoe and one new. She is reading with deep attention not one of her own stories which nobody ever buys, but an adventure that will delight the world as long as there are children in it. The story of Cinderella. At the royal palace, Cinderella climbed up the great spiral staircase. Her little glass slippers seemed to tinkle a tune against the marble steps. At the top of the staircase, she heard the swell of music from the ball. But when Cinderella entered the ballroom, everything stopped. All of the guests in the ballroom were speechless with awe at the lovely and delicate princess they saw. Cinderella, for her part, was just as impressed, for she'd never seen people so fancily dressed. There were elegant earls and debonair dukes sporting the latest in powdered perukes. Baronets' coronets, princesses' crowns, the marquises' smiles, and the dowagers' frowns. She caught just a glimpse of Gisella and Bella, who never suspected their maid Cinderella had blossomed so bravely from cinders and shyness. Oh, look. That must be the young prince. It's his highness. Cinderella was quite terrified, for she'd never met a prince, and she didn't have even the slightest idea of what to do. So she sank to her knees in a curtsy of loyalty, exactly what young girls should do before royalty. Good evening. Good evening, Your Highness. May I have the pleasure of this dance with you? I shall be deeply honored, Your Highness. Let the music commence! You waltz quite divinely. May I say the same? I'll tell you quite frankly, I'm glad that you came. Though I'm sorry to say that I don't know your name. Oh, dear. For this evening, I think I must pass as the princess whose slippers are made out of glass. Are you enjoying yourself, little princess? Oh, yes. And everything pleases you? Your party, I, I cannot describe how sublime it is. But tell me, I beg you, exactly what time it is. Only ten after ten. And time for another day. I trust you're not tired. Oh, it's perfectly heaven. Uh, but what is the time? Why, it's scarcely eleven. Come dance and romance with me, lovable lass. Little princess whose slippers are made out of glass. What's that? Just the clock at the top of the tower. Striking twelve? Why so frightened of midnight? Oh, the hour I must go. God be with you. And, and, and thank you for all of the gladness and glory I've had at the ball. Wait, wait. Princess. My slipper. Come back, little princess. Come back. understand why my princess has fled. And here in the road, there's an old pumpkin head. And some mice and a lizard that scamper away. And one tiny slipper, size four double A's. 